In this video, I'm going to show you how we can do modular design within Godot Engine. I'm going to use polymorphism to create a series of power-ups for a simple platformer game. Let's get right into it. Here's my sample project. I have a little character that moves back and forth, and I'm using some of those excellent free resources from Kenny. What I'd like to do is give him a uh, pickup that when he touches it, he gets a certain power-up, and I'll put a different one over here that gives him a different power-up. Let's go ahead and make the pickups first. I'm making it an area 2D so it's easy to detect the overlap. Using the same tile sheet as I do for the rest of the level, I can try to pick out the specific tile that I want. I think it's around 7. Whoops. Uh, what I mean is 7 on X and 3 on Y. There we are, the little blue diamond, that's what I wanted. And we can easily make this collision shape surround the diamond. Great. Let's go ahead and give this a script. And I'm going to call this simply pickup because I can use the same script for all my pickups. Okay. Now we should expect this body to be the character, uh, and when the character runs into this thing, I want to call a method on the character to give it a certain power up. So let's make sure we have a place to call that. For now, we'll just print a debug message to make sure the plumbing is in place. And here I'm using a standard GDScript approach, using duct typing. Which is to say, as long as this thing has the add power up method, then we'll invoke it. And once we've done that, we can remove this particular diamond from the scene. Oops, better put one in so I can test it. Great, we can see from the console that our method was called appropriately. Let's go ahead and create a red pickup while we're at it. I'll just duplicate this scene. And the only real difference here will be which tile I use. That looks right. Make sure to rename it. And it's using that same script, pickup.gd. The way that we're going to have these two kinds of pickups give different abilities to the character is by putting the abilities into separate scripts. A lot of my students are coming from computer science backgrounds where they're used to statically type languages, and along with that comes a desire for things like interfaces and abstract classes. Those don't exactly exist in GDScript. In order to demonstrate how you can get a similar kind of structure, I want to show you one way to approximate that. I'll make a new script, and I'll call it PowerUp. My intention is that this will be like an interface or an abstract class. I'll go ahead and make the name globally scoped. And we'll give it a function called activate. I'll send in one parameter here, which will be the character itself. The trick here, though, is that I don't expect to ever call activate on a power-up instance, but rather on instances of its subclasses. So here, I can simply fail an assertion. With that in mind, let's go ahead and make our first power-up. I'll 
call it linear blast, and we'll make sure that it inherits from power up. When I call this method, what I want to do is shoot a projectile in the direction the character is facing. Well, I'm going to need a projectile for that, so let me add that real quick. There, that'll work. Let's give this a script that just moves it across the screen. That should work, but we can verify that with a simple test case. Great. So back in Linear Blast, we can make sure we have a reference to that projectile. Let me give you a little tip here about something that tripped me up when I first tried doing this. I tend to make a lot of these kind of variables on ready variables, but in fact there will be no ready method here because I'm going to load this script dynamically. So I want to make sure this is just a plain old variable. Let's go ahead and instantiate the projectile class. We need to set its direction appropriately, and I don't think I have a way to get that out of the character yet. Let's take a look. The X scale of the sprite tells us which way the character is facing. That's a pretty standard approach in this kind of 2D platforming game. I could create a method to access that. I think what I'd like to do is make a new property that will represent that idea. Then I can also demonstrate the setGet keyword. I don't want a mutator for it, because agents outside the character shouldn't be able to turn him around. Whoops, that should be bool. And again, I can reference the scale property in the sprite. I don't actually like accessing the nodes in this manner because it makes renaming them difficult. I already have an onReady variable to represent that, so let me use that instead. Okay, back to Linear Blast. Let's see, did we call that direction? Yes. That should do it. We'll need to add the projectile to the scene, and I'll do this in a bit of an ad hoc way, but it should work. Now I need a way to activate this, so let me add a new input mapping. That'll work. And finally, let's modify the pickup script so that it can attach this power-up to the character.
I'm creating an exported variable here that is itself a power-up. Now remember, this script is shared by both kinds of power-ups. That means we can open up blue pickup, and now it has this property exported. I can then select this and load Linear Blast. So my blue diamond, which looks like this, is going to be affiliated with the Linear Blast power-up. When the body is entered, we can instantiate that class and send it as a parameter to add power-up, like this. In fact, we have a class called PowerUp that we can reuse here. Notice that GDScript recognizes that this is the class name PowerUp, whereas this is the name of the variable. I've capitalized the first letter because this is the name of the class from an object-oriented point of view. Let's modify that character script. And finally, make sure that when we get that activation message, we activate our current power-up, if there is one. Notice that having the type in place means that the editor can auto-complete this. Remember, we defined a sort of do-nothing activate method in the abstract pickup class and we'll send along ourselves. Now, unless I missed a step, which is possible, this may just work. Let's try it. That's pretty good, although, of course, we're instantiating these in entirely the wrong place. Let's fix that. That'll be in the linear blast. We just need to make sure to set the position right. Great. Did you notice those little imperfections? The little white lines there? Those are just an artifact of the default import scheme. Let's fix that real quick. We just need to turn filter off since we're using pixel art. Great. Let's go ahead and add a second kind of power up. I'll start by duplicating the script for convenience. And we'll call it Radio Blast. Now, as you might expect, this will create several projectiles in a circle. Instead of setting the direction based on the facing of the character, we'll simply loop around a circle. Remember that pi radians is half a circle, and tau is equal to 2 pi. So tau, which is really a much more convenient number, is the complete circle. Now we can connect that radial blast with our red pickup. Remember, we exported this power-up variable from the pickup script. So we can set this one to be radial blast. And again, if we got all the pieces in place, that may just work. Oops, need to add one to test it. Let's get that a little closer. Blue pickup gives me linear blast. Red pickup gives me radial blast. So let's again quickly review those steps. 
The character script is essentially unchanged from what it was before. I have the ability to activate these power-ups, and a power-up can be anything that is a subclass of my power-up class. I did need to add this facing right variable, but that's a pretty innocuous change. Power-up itself is essentially an abstract superclass, or an interface. We should never call activate directly on it. Instead, its subclasses should override that method, as we did in Radial Blast and in Linear Blast. All of my pickups work fundamentally the same way, by sharing the single pickup script, which exports a variable that allows us to attach any power-up to the pickup. I hope you found that useful. Let me know how you use this technique in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video. Happy programming!